What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the shop. I'm BJ. So glad to have you all here today. Um, we're going to go over everybody's favorite subjects when it comes to using your CNC. And that is how you hold down your work pieces. And there's, I don't want to say there's endless ways to do it, but there's more ways out there than I've even messed with. And I found a few that really work, and I've found a lot that are just an absolute waste of money that I personally have wasted money on. So we're going to go over those today, and hopefully I can help y'all out in making some decisions if you're just getting into the CNC world, or if you've been doing it a long time like me, help you kind of narrow down what it is that you like, what you don't like about it. And like I said, I'm just going to go over like I said, what I like and dislike about certain CNC work holding. So follow along and we'll show you what we got. All right. So let's just get straight to it. Let's talk about the don'ts, the things that I say that me personally, I'm not going to waste my time or money on anymore. Um, and it's really two things that I think are an absolute they're just pointless in in my opinion they they make a great they're great for certain applications but when you're using t track and other things they're they're a waste of time um the biggest thing is t nuts so these things or threaded inserts one they take absolutely forever to do i mean when I was cutting these out individually, it was about a 20 minute process to cut each slot slat out individually. If I was just cutting just the dog holes, it would have been like a five minute cut. Um, it was literally just because the T nut process takes so much longer. Now talking about dog holes, I think dog holes are awesome. They, they definitely have their purpose with the CNC. Um, but I bought these, you see here, so it's just a dog hole clamp and it butts up against your material like this and then you tighten it in. Now, the reason I say don't waste your money on these is whenever, I'll show you here, you can see it, let's turn it this way. Whenever you are tightening it, it even tied into the, the, the bed, it will cause your wood to lift. So it puts down upward pressure on whatever it is you're working on. And I don't know if it's just this particular model in itself. Um, I know Rockler and some others have a couple different ones, but I just, this one, like I said, I just don't like it. It was a set of two with four of the, the little dark hole, little of these with four of these little dark hole pieces um, for 40 bucks shipped. Um, but it's just, it's a waste. I wouldn't do it, in my opinion. Um, so those are my big don'ts. There's really only two things that I've found that just, they don't make a lot of sense, at least for me. I said, like I said, T-Nuts have a great place in a CNC. My original um, CNC, it was nothing but T-Nuts. And I did use it. It worked great with the clamps I was using. Um, but I found out later on, like the last two years I had the machine, I was using other methods. So I'm going to switch you around here and get you a little closer view of the table. And we're going to go over some of the other methods that I really like, and then we'll go from there. All right. So talking about things that I really like, and sorry, you don't get to see my pretty face in this. Hi. Um, things, a couple of things that I love that I use quite a bit. Um, first thing is these oops clamps from Onefinity, and I've been using these for years, back before even the Onefinity existed. And I love them with the T-Tracks because you just slide it in here and it clamps down like that. And then the only downside to my T-Track being this way, a little more sliding this way, but you just slide it in and you're good. And then the thing I love about it is on the back side, you can see right here, it's got this rear foot. So you can screw that down and you're going to get downward clamping pressure on the back so you get a good even clamping pressure. That works great with the T-Track. That's primarily what I use the T-Track for is cutting with these. And that's when I know I'm not going edge to edge. A lot of the stuff that I do now, I am going edge to edge, so I don't use these as much, but they still they have a, 
a huge place in my shop and I absolutely love them. And you can actually get these kits from their website. I think they come in a kit of eight and there's two different models. There's the T-nut. So if you're going to use the T-nut, there's the T-nut or threaded insert model. And then there's the um, T-track model that these are. So they come with the, the nut or the bolt that'll work in the T-track. Um, probably by far my favorite thing for alignment are the dog hole blocks. You can get a set of these off Amazon, a set of four for $15 to $20, depending on what when they're on sale. They have different colors. I just went with the red just because, one, I want them to stand out so I see them. That's why I went with the red. And then what's nice is because you can set it up just like I've got it here. And this is a little excessive. I don't need six of them right here. Um, but that gives me a good 90 degree stop. So I know, hey, I'm 90, I'm square to my work, my work surface and my machine. And that's what's awesome with that. Um, going from that, another extremely common use, common thing I use, and this was something that I used more with my older CNC. And this was after I kind of got tired of doing, you know, messing with the, the um, threaded inserts and all that stuff. Um, and if I was cutting something, so if I had to cut something that was inside, so if I wasn't using so if I was going to cut off the corners on a piece, so making like a charcuterie board um, or something like that, making a small name plate or something like that. And everybody says, I've seen it on different places to use a brad nail or a brad nail gun. I, I say, don't do that. I say, go get you a pin nailer and you can go to Harbor Freight and get one of these for 20 or 30 bucks. I forget how much this one was. I've had it for three or four years now. Um, and it's nice. This one will do anything from one inch pin nails up to a half inch or down to a half inch. It's a 23 gauge. I only use the one inch nails and I use this thing for not only work holding on the CNC, which is great because you can pop nail in every corner. It's going to hold it firm. It's not going to come loose. And then when you peel it up, the pin nail versus the brad nail the pin nail is not going to damage your waste board the pin the brad nails for some reason they like to grab onto that mdf and just rip it out and it just it ends up tearing it up the brad nail or the pin nail it does not do that at least that i haven't had an issue with and it holds and the cool thing is is if you mess up your cut and you run your bit through a pin nail you're not going to damage your bit near as much. You might damage it a little bit depending on the bit, but near as much as a brad nail. So that's a huge win in my book and why I say go with a pin nailer over a brad nailer all day long. And then everybody's favorite is the what blue tape. So just your regular 3M blue tape and... CA glue and I use this blue masters thick and I do it because I use so much of it. This is cheap. I forget what I paid for this. I've had this bottle for six months or a year now and it works great. Use that with a little bit of kicker and then you're good to go. Now I will say this, get rid of this. Don't use, don't use the blue tape. Go get you some of the yellow masking tape. You can get a whole pack of the yellow masking tape for what a roll of this costs almost. And you're going to be throwing it away and you're not worried about tight, fine lines. The blue stuff's for, for painting, for masking off for painting. Don't waste your money on it. Get this stuff. It holds just as good, if not better, because I think this is actually a little bit stickier than the blue tape and it's going to hold great. I know, um, I think is it, it's Jeff from Two Moose Designs. He was talking about it, and this is his go-to for pretty much everything he does. Um, there's also the screw method where you put a screw in each corner. I've never done that unless I had a board or a sheet of plywood that I was cutting that was super, super warped and a nail just wouldn't do it. Then I'll throw a, a, a screw in there, but I really don't like the way the screws, um, what they do to the waste board. I try to, I'm trying to keep my waste board as nice as possible for as long as I can. If it messes up, it messes up. Now, something new that I'm trying is, let's see if we can get it to focus in here. I know a lot of people have probably seen this, but this tape from X-Fasten, 
Now this is their, I think they call it the woodworkers tape and it's been designed primarily for CNC stuff and different things like that. So I'm going to test this real quick. I've never even used it. I literally just pulled this out of the package to film this video. So you're going to get to experience this with me. So let's, let's lay down a couple strips um, until based on, I mean, it peels off nice and easy. So we'll throw down a couple strips here and then see what happens. I have to drop my knife. I need that. All right, so it should be fairly easy just to peel this up. Ooh, I do like that. So I used to use carpet tape a lot when I was when I first started out before I had my waste board, my old waste board on my old CNC with the threaded inserts. I used carpet tape from the big box store. It was such a pain. We'll line this up, get our, oh, that's not perfectly 90, but it'll work. So yeah, I'd say that works. I mean, that's taking quite a bit of force to, to peel up. But then, yeah, it just peels right up. And then the thing that they, they, they talk about is it won't leave any residue on the board. And that was the other thing that the carpet tape did really bad is it would leave a film on the board when you were done. So you had to clean that off. Well, this, it peels right off. So I'm, I'm actually really impressed. It's a little more expensive than doing the, the tape and CA glue method, but I like it. I, I think that might be one of my new go-tos, you know, and it didn't use a whole lot. I mean, that was a couple feet for that. So yeah, I, I like that. So now let me show you the other method, the tape and CA glue method, and then we'll go from there. So hopefully this tape roll works for me. It'd be a little difficult. Now I'll say the only thing I like about the carp, the, the X fasten tape, the double sided tape, is it's just one apple, you know, you just put down a couple strips, peel the backer off, and then you're good. With this tape, not only do you have to put it on your board that you're cutting, you then gotta lay some down here. And then I do a couple extra just because I know I might be off a little bit. and I just don't want it sticking to my waste board. So then there's that. And then, so yeah, you can see it's just gonna sit right here, just like that. And then take your, your CA glue and you can use whatever CA glue you want. Like I said, this is just my, my preference. And then, well, scratch that. Let's go grab the other bottle. This one's actually not the open bottle. Hold on same stuff i just i usually put it in the smaller bottle i've got another bottle over there of that of the same um blue masters um but yeah same exact stuff and then just all you gotta do run you a little bead might be a little excessive right there and then can't do that one-handed take your activator Turn off our workspace here. A little activator there, a little activator there. And then we will take this, lay it down right there. Kind of work it around a little bit just to make sure that it's getting on there. Getting all the, make sure there's no air, air pockets in there. And that's down. I mean, it's good. It's not, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. So if I'm engraving, you know, names, lines anything like that or even doing a through cut this works great um but like i said i think i'm gonna i like this a little bit more just because it's a lot quicker so if you're running through a lot of stuff this is going to be a lot faster for you 
than the CA glue method just because there's a little more work that goes into this. And me personally, being in an enclosed shop, I don't like the smell of this. It just kind of hurts my head and gives me an upset stomach when I'm using this a lot, especially with the activator. I know it's releasing some fumes and I probably shouldn't be doing this in an enclosed building. Um, but that's the biggest re reason I kind of want to get away from this is just due to the smell. So I know it's it's definitely not going to be not good for you. But then peeling this up, same thing. Just get one side, peel it up, and then peel off the tape, tape off the table, and then you're good. And then just make sure you, you know, throw this away. Usually it's all going to be dry by the time you're done. Since I just put that on, it's still a little wet in a couple spots that the activator didn't hit. But all in all, yeah, that's it. So yeah, end of the day, those are my do's and don'ts as far as work holding um, with the CNC. I really, really believe going forward, the x Fasten Woodworkers tape is probably going to be my favorite. Um, again, I just got recommended this, bought some off Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. And you can get three of these rolls. It comes in a, a three pack like this. And it's what each one is 108 feet. So 324 feet of tape. Is that right? Yeah. 324 feet. Um, I believe. Yeah. And it's awesome. It's super quick, super handy. Um, if I'm having to do something where I'm not doing a through cut, and it's just like a V, v carve engraving or something like that. I, I truly believe this is going to be my go-to um, primarily. I'm still going to rely on my pin nailer. You know, this has been my go-to for years. So Old Faithful is never going to die as far as my my favorite. The pin nailer might die, but well, I'll go spend another 20, 30 bucks at Harbor Freight and buy a new one. Oh, well. Um, and then, you know, for those times when you need it, you know, the oops clamps or some kind of T-nut clamp or T-track clamp will work great on something like that. Again, don't don't waste your money on these. They're, they're junk. They're not going to do what you want to because you have to add downward pressure. And the point of this is to keep the top. The, the point of all of what I try to do is to keep the top and the sides of the board clear. So there's no chance of my bit running into anything. That's the biggest thing, because the bits aren't cheap. I mean, the normal bit that I run in my machine is about a $60 bit. And the last thing I want to do is run it into a piece of metal or something and damage that bit. You know, even the, the V bits I use are pretty pricey. And I just, I don't want to risk damaging them. Uh, I've damaged enough of them just by dropping them over the years. So that's pr primarily it. I would definitely recommend getting something on your waste board that gives you a good 90 to your fence. Um, check out Two Moose Designs video. Um, he's actually got some CNC files on his site, and I'll link his channel below um, where he's doing, he's cutting a pattern, the, the grid lines into his waste board, which I'm actually going to go get from him because I like that style. Because you, so you know, okay, here is, you know, true 90 and everything to the board, to what I'm doing, because it's going to cut it to the true X and Y axis. So, but that's it. If you have any questions on work holding, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, give me a like and follow if you feel like it, if you think I deserved it. I do appreciate it. I appreciate all those that, all the followers I've got, everybody that watches the videos. Um, if you want to go follow me on Instagram or TikTok, I'll have both of those linked down below too. I do a lot more daily stuff on both of those channels, just so you can kind of see what's going on in the shop, some behind the scenes stuff and other little projects that I'm working on in the shop. Um, but thank y'all. Love y'all. You know, and we'll talk to you next time. Later.